Welcome to this video on complex numbers. This is a five credit external standard for calculus. And in this video, we're gonna go over what a complex number actually is and what happens in this complex number standard. Now to understand what a complex number actually is, it goes back around 500 years to this guy, Girolamo Cardano. He figured out that while you can solve some polynomial equations, that's equations that have x to the power of something in them, there are other polynomial equations that you just can't solve. And the reason you can't solve this equation here, for example, is because you end up having to solve something for the square root of negative 1.75. And we are not allowed mathematically to have the square root of a negative number. So for hundreds of years, mathematicians couldn't do anything about it. Until this guy kind of figured, well, imagine if we separate this out. Now, the square root of negative 1.75 is the same as saying square root of 1.75 multiplied by the square root of negative 1. So he told his mathematician friends, just imagine, imagine that this negative 1 here is a number and we can call it i. If we call it i and just ignore the fact that we can't have the square root of a negative number for now, we can actually solve all kinds of polynomial equations. We'll be able to solve anything. So in this case, he decided to write out the square root of 1.75 multiplied by the square root of negative 1 is the same as saying the square root of 1.75i because i means the square root of negative 1. So this equation here, we could now solve and x would equal a half plus or minus the square root of 1.75i. Now it doesn't look very pretty, in fact it looks quite complex. However, it is a solution. And to understand what a complex number is, we're going to take a harder look at this answer here and what it's made up of. Now the first thing we're going to do is just simplify it so it's easier to look at. 1 half is the same as saying 0.5 and the square root of 1.75 if you put it in your calculator is the same as saying 1.33. So we're just going to write that in purely because it's easier to look at. Now if we look at this complex number here, there are two parts which make it up. The first is called a real part. 0.5 here is a real number, just like 10 or 556.2. They're real numbers. Whereas there's a second part which is imaginary. It's multiplied by this i, which is the same as saying the square root of negative 1. Now if you only have this real part, it's just called a real number. If you only have this imaginary part with an i, it's called an imaginary number. However, when you add these together, you get a complex number. It has both the parts of real and imaginary in it. So this is what a complex number actually is, something made up of these two parts. Now in your standard, you're going to have to look at a number of different things with these complex numbers. So I'm going to run through a dozen or more different examples of things that we will cover in the future. So don't worry if you don't understand any of what's going on. I just want to show you what to expect and what will be coming up in this standard. And they almost all come down to the idea of changing and solving with these complex numbers here. So if we look at solving something, for example, we might have needed to solve this polynomial equation. And now we can, we can get an answer for x equals. Now don't worry right now if you don't understand what this means or why it's relevant to you. The fact is you'll solve a polynomial equation like this and you'll get a complex number as your answer. And one thing you'll notice that's going to come up a lot in this complex number topics is the square root of a number. Like here, we've got the square root of 1.75. The square root of a number we call thirds, and we're going to look in a little bit more detail in future about what you do with all these square roots, just to make sure you're solving them correctly. We also are going to use this quadratic equation an awful lot. Now you might have come across this in level 2, it's just if we have a square root of a negative number, now we need to use i. So you get the idea, we have a complex number, we're going to need to solve these polynomials, but you could also add them together, take them away, divide or multiply these things together. Or the complex numbers will be fractions sometimes. Possibly the complex number will be squared or cubed or to the power of 4. No matter what it is, we're going to figure out how to solve all these different problems. Now the other thing you might come across is just changing complex numbers around. Now when you change something around, you could simplify this equation rather than having to find a whole solution of what it actually equals. Or alternatively, you might have to draw a complex number on a diagram. And what that almost always entails is you've got two axes, just like a graph. You've got a real axis and an imaginary axis. So we go across and plot the real number of 0.5 here, and we plot the imaginary number here of 1.33. So on the imaginary axis, we go to 1.33 and we plot those two numbers. This is called an argand diagram, so that's how you might draw a complex number. Another thing you might do is change the form of a complex number. So this complex number can also be written as 1.42 cis 1.2. Now this might mean nothing to you right now, but we're going to learn how to change from one form into another and back again. And one last thing is you might not just want to find a single point like right here. You might want to find a whole area. 
So if you find a whole area, that's called a complex loci. And we're gonna look at how we find regions of complex numbers as well. The take home message of what you need to know primarily is simply that a complex number has two parts. It has a real part and it has an imaginary part. And the imaginary part, which is what we call i, i equals the square root of negative one. So that's the important thing of knowing what a complex number actually is. It's when you have these two parts together. And what's gonna come up in your standard is changing and solving these complex numbers. And we're gonna learn around 20 different skills over the series of videos about how you can change and solve these complex numbers. So that's all you need to take away from this video. Good luck with the rest of complex numbers.